we start the video with a bit of slow motion it looks fantastic in real life you have to bear in mind that this is in broad daylight as well i think the reason it's working so well now is because i've just simply increased the height of the chimney which is, has quite a dramatic effect i mean later on in the video you, you can see where i load uh, fresh pieces of wood on top of the existing hot fire and i managed to keep it under control which is the, um, the first time that's really happened certainly um, over the last five or six days of testing this is the most successful so i've moved the stove further down the garden and i've increased the height of a chimney i managed to find a five inch insulated stainless twin wall and on top of that i've stuck my other four inch stainless chimney it gives a total height of 1.5 meters so still quite short here you can see where the air feeds the fire coming in through the back. I thought it was a clever move to scallop out the underneath of the secondary air or the top of the firebox in fact. But it seems to form a jet. It's making a jet on the flame that's coming up and spoiling the shape of the vortex. It does sort itself out later on in the video but I think it's a bit of a negative effect certainly at the start up anyway. I'll probably see if I can revert it back to how it was before. Ten percent air, secondary air, full open, no primary air, secondary air, full open. Max air, secondary air, full open. New wood burning very well. Secondary air full open, main air full open, still under control. No flames exiting the afterburner. Cut off secondary air, immediate increase in the vortex, starting to over fuel severely. Let's see what happens. Take out, open up the secondary air. See if it will bring it under control. Main air and secondary air all open. That's approximately 30% main air and about 20% secondary air. Main air open, secondary air closed, immediately overfueling. open secondary air, brings it under control, not instantly but it's going back. After 30 seconds or so it gets back to under control. It's interesting to see how far the vortex is staying near the back of the afterburner. There's a few flames up the top corners shooting through but the mass majority of the vortex is staying right near the back. It even seems to run quite well with no glass on the door at all. The heat it's chucking out is outrageous. I mean, I can barely, I'm gonna have to move back. This is crazy. Huge amounts of heat being kicked out from there. That's completely open and the secondary air open, pretty much under control. So overall, that was um, quite successful. Certainly more successful than the last half a dozen burns I've had. I mean, it's quite obvious reasons. If there was one thing I think I could change to improve it, it I, I put the thermometer, um, my gun inside the gap where the, where the secondary air is going in, and it's running about 250, 260 degrees. And it's quite cold outside. It's about seven or eight degrees centigrade at the moment. But I think it would improve if I could really heat up the secondary air a, a bit more and I think the way to do that is to put a cast iron roof on top of the firebox or even uh, or even a, a refactory. It might be easier for me to make one and find the cast iron. And I think that would really heat up the secondary air a lot more, but uh, we'll have to test it and find out.